Hey guys, it's Isarek. Uh Today I want to do a quick little video on um, stylizing realism. Uh, so the biggest thing with stylizing realism um, is uh, just the, the fa balancing what you keep and what you get rid of. And for me, what I get rid of is the... Um, sometimes I, I, I enlarge the eye just a little bit. Sometimes I shrink the nose just a little bit. Sometimes I bring the eyes apart just a little bit and give them more of that alien zoned out look. Sometimes I'll thicken the eyebrows outside of the beauty standard of a female, just like you, you see me doing in front of you. Um, sometimes I uh, stylize and bring in pigmentation in areas where they don't belong, very similar to makeup, so makeup stylization, like cosmetic stylization. Um, sometimes I have a more of a, an uncanny, weird almost, like edging on weird uh, expression. So these things take away from the realism, meaning take away from the easy to associate with, easy to observe, easy to relate to with the audience that, that realism, pure realism brings, or photorealism. So when you provide, you have a specific mood that you want to express and you, you, you choose um, rules or you choose tools to push that mood across, it could be overshadowing the eyes just a little bit so they're a little bit more mysterious, um, lowering the eyebrows to the edge of angry and uh, distressed at the same time, and that's pushing the mood, um, not provide, providing any light or specularity on the eye itself so they feel a little bit more dead or disconnected or zoned out. All of these things are the things that I introduce on top of the realism. So what I do keep is the fact that the eyes can blink. Um, the stationary, un fixed components of the mechanics of the eye, like the inner corner and the eyelid, uh, these things can't change. Um, some beauty standards I keep, like the inner curve of the eye or the uh, downward tilt of the eye towards the nose and, and preserving the beauty standard of the female. Um, makeup around the eyes and an eyeliner kind of style, I preserve that. Uh, the fact that the nose is the highest elevation, all the skeletal and muscular and uh, anatomical uh, signatures of, of realism I keep. But when it comes to what I don't keep are the things that we can manipulate with makeup naturally while still keeping our faces perfectly intact. Um, it's not so much that I touch anatomy. I never touch anatomy when it comes to stylization, but I touch surface changes. Anything on the surface that'll change, like the shape of the eyebrows, that's surface. I consider that surface. It doesn't touch the mechanics or it doesn't um, mess around with the structural integrity of the face. Um, those are the things that I can keep, and that's the stuff that really pushes the painting, makes it look beautiful at the same time, unique, and preserving the realism so it makes it relatable. Uh, so that's typically how you should be guiding yourself around stylizing realism anywhere you go, be it anime hybrid or cartoony hybrid or abstract realism, um, meaning like you're using s signatures or units or or components of abstraction on top of realism, like a very flat abstracted clothing, but a fully realistic face, or very flat face, but fully realistic eyes, or abstract face, only the eyes are realistic. That's hybrid, that's in, half in, half out. Um, and you see that with Alfonso Mucha a lot, you see that with, uh, oh, I forget his name, uh, the other one <laughs> that painted the melting clocks. He does that a lot with his figures. They see a very st real stylization around the eyes. And early Picasso also did that as well before he went full abstraction in the face. Um, so what we're what we're trying to do is we're slowly moving. See here, I'm starting starting to add a little bit of light around the eyes, and I feel like that's taking away from that weirdness. So what I'm trying to do, what we're always trying to do, is make sure that this weird creature that's fully stylized, if we were to see it in real life, it could still blink and function. So we're painting humanoids with the stylization in humans. The human anatomy or the realistic anatomy, that just comes from the fact that it can function and light works on it the way it works on any form in the three-dimensional world. So imagine you found a new species of human and they look weird, they have weird proportions, but they still can blink and function and eat and uh, their face, the skin is still porous and the light still shines the way it does on any other object. And... Um, that's kind of my mid. That's kind of safe ground I found in my style. I'll make them look like alien humanoids, and I can give them all kinds of weird proportions, but I'll keep everything else intact. So stylization is not an excuse out to to leave realism. It's not an excuse to forfeit study. It's not an excuse to say um, or, or hide, accept certain rules of fundamentals and then throw away other rules of fundamentals, like keeping realistic eyes but not having any cast shadows in your work at all. Cast shadows only benefit your work. 
Uh, so it's you gotta go all in with the realism, realistic lighting, realistic shading, realistic geometric anatomy, um, realistic textures, uh, realistic um, anatomy in general, like the actual muscular anatomy and the skeletal anatomy and um, like fem human anatomy and the difference between male and female anatomy. All of these things cannot just be forfeited just because you said I have a style. Uh, style means that you have broken certain rules and you you as a really good artist, a professional artist that's mastered the fundamentals, knows that they would never want to break the rules of, of, of physics. They would never want to break form and light on form and geometry. They would never want to break them. So just because I say learn the rules before you break them doesn't mean I say after you learn all those you can break any of them. No, you can only break some of them and those are some of the an an anatomy rules and some minor, minor form rules like how much of a cast shadow you're keeping or how much contrast you're keeping. These things don't interrupt the fact that you have shading, you have coarse shadows, you have highlights, you have radial shading, you have edges and geometric anatomy. These things don't change, uh, these core fundamentals. So as you get better, as you become more uh, skilled, as your mileage increases, you realize there are rules that you'd never want to break because you wouldn't be able to unlearn them or unsee them if you wanted to. And the more you preserve the rules of physics, the easier it will be when you do break the rules of anatomy and other stylizations that you bring in, the, the more these physics will reinforce that style, make it even more appealing, more beautiful. Nothing is better for a viewer than seeing a weird creature that looks like it can exist. And stylization is what brings in that uniqueness and the realism is what makes it believable. So you want that believable believability and it represents a skill level that's very high anyways. If you're always hiding your lack of fundamental knowledge behind a style, it's only going to show you as a weakling. And it's not a successful hiding anyway. We're going to be able to look past it and see, wow, this person really can't understand the three-quarter view and they're hiding it behind this flat stylized eye. Whereas you could have done a week or two weeks of studying on eyes and rotation and geometric anatomy behind eyes and rotation, and you could have tackled that fundamental head on. See, those are the rules you can't break because it really shows the weakness in your work, shows the weakness in your, in the, the lack that you have. There's no successful way to hide fundamentals without it l limiting or inhibiting the, cap the, the, the potential of the realism of your, of your design, the belie believability of your design. So that's a little bit of, a, of my thoughts on, on stylizing realism. You, can, you have to keep the physics, but you can stylize everything else after that. You can stylize all kinds of stuff, um, and, uh, and that's really the best hybrid. That's the best version of a hybrid. There are many hybrids out there, and not all of them are successful. Some of them are just plain weird because they've broken way too many rules of fundamentals and anatomy. And there are some fundamentals in anatomy as well. Yes, anatomy is one of those things that we can break a lot, um, but uh, but it, it, it's not we can't always break it. So in this piece here that I painted, I, I did break some rules, um, and I made the eyes a little bit darker than they should be. And I'm stylizing, pushing that weird uh, anemic look and giving like a caricature style to the face. But I'm not completely forfeiting the realism, and I have kept general gradients and radial shading, the radial shading, the edge work, and um, all of that nested in some really really good facial structural skeletal anatomy. So keep that in mind next time you guys want to experiment a little bit with breaking rules and stylizing your realism and uh, and I think it would make a much more successful execution of your style and really give your style a spine. Um, thank you guys for your patronage. You guys are wonderful. I'm so sorry for the delay this month. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'll keep these coming. Bye.